billions of dollars in customer value overnight. And for every day. past month, the dedicated prosecutors of this office and our partners at the FBI, SEC, and CFTC have been working around the clock to figure out what happened and to begin the process of seeking justice. This morning, we unsealed an eight-count indictment charging Samuel Bankman Freed, FTX's founder, with a series of interrelated fraud schemes that contributed to FTX's collapse. I authorized these charges last week, Wednesday. A grand jury here in Manhattan indicted Mr. Bankman Freed last week, Friday. We obtained a warrant for his arrest, and that arrest was executed yesterday in the Bahamas. Now let me be clear, my remarks today are going to be limited. That is by design. This investigation is very much ongoing, and it is moving very quickly. But I also want to be clear about something else. While this is our first public announcement, it will not be our last. The indictment has eight counts, but effectively, it outlines four different areas of misconduct. First, we allege that Bankman Freed defrauded customers at FTX.com, the cryptocurrency exchange that he founded. Second, we allege that he defrauded lenders to Alameda Research, his proprietary hedge fund. Third, we allege that he defrauded investors in, F in FTX. And lastly, we allege that he violated campaign finance laws. Now, let me say a little bit more about what we allege in the indictment. First, we charge that from 2019 until earlier this year, Bankman Freed and his co-conspirators stole billions of dollars from FTX customers. He used that money for his personal benefit, including to make personal investments and to cover expenses and debts of his hedge fund, Alameda Research. Secondly, and relatedly, we charge that Bankman Freed lied to Alameda's lenders about the source of the money that he was using to pay those debts. Third, we charged that earlier this year, in the midst of the crypto crisis, Bankman Freed lied to investors in FTX about the fact that he had sent billions of dollars in FTX customer money to Alameda. And fourth, we charged that Bankman Freed violated federal campaign finance laws by causing tens of millions of dollars in illegal campaign contributions to be made to candidates and committees associated with both Democrats and Republicans. These contributions were disguised to look like they were coming from wealthy co-conspirators, when in fact, the contributions were funded by Alameda Research with stolen customer money. And all of this dirty money was used in service of Bankman Freed's desire to buy bipartisan influence and impact the direction of public policy in Washington. To anyone who was watching this or hears about this prosecution, if you believe that you have been a victim of these schemes or you have information about the conduct that we've alleged in our indictment that we've unsealed today, please let us know. To any person, entity, or political campaign that has received stolen customer money, we ask that you work with us to return that money to the innocent victims. And to anyone who participated in wrongdoing at FTX or Alameda Research and who has not yet come forward, I would strongly encourage you to come see us before we come see you. Now, let me say a word about our partners at the FBI, the SEC, and the CFTC. The women and men of the FBI are some of the finest public servants in this country, and they have been with us since day one in this investigation, and there is no one, no one better to work with. I want to thank the brilliant lawyers at the SEC and the CFTC. This investigation is complex and it's sprawling. We embrace that kind of challenge here in the Southern District of New York. And we always want the CFTC and the SEC by our side when we're doing that. And finally, I want to thank the career prosecutors from my office handling this case. Nicholas Rose and Danielle Sassoon and their supervisors, Scott Hartman and Matthew Podolsky, the chiefs of our Securities and Commodities Fraud Task Force. 
I want to acknowledge the contributions and hard work of the prosecutors from our Money Laundering and Transnational Criminal Enterprises Unit, including Samuel Raymond and Thane Wren, and their chiefs, Jessica Feinstein and Tara Lamort. And I want to acknowledge the contributions from the chief of our Public Corruption Unit, Rebecca Donaleski. This should be very clear, but it's an all-hands-on-deck investigation here in SDNY. And I couldn't be prouder of the team that I'm privileged to lead. I now want to invite up to the podium FBI Assistant Director in Charge, Michael Driscoll. Thank you, Damien. So thank you all for joining us this afternoon for this important announcement. This case came together at great speed in such that it's only possible to be standing here today through tremendous coordination and cooperation from many people and agencies. As the indictment today alleges, Bankman Freed knowingly defrauded customers of FTX through the misappropriation of customer deposits to pay expenses and debts of, of a different company. In addition, Bankman Freed executed deliberate transactions designed to obscure and disguise the misuse of customer funds. He preyed on his customers, the victims of this case, abusing the trust placed not only in his company, but in himself as the lead of that company. We are determined to help the victims of this case get a sense of justice, and we will continue to make every attempt to recover as much of their funds as possible. If you're willing to de deceive customers and attempt to hide your actions, we will be persistent in pursuing you and ensuring you are brought to justice. I want to thank Damian Williams and his team at the Southern District for their cooperation and uh, partnership on this case. I also want to thank our partners at the SEC and the CFTC for their outstanding work. A word of thanks to DEA's Aviation Division, their Foreign Operations Group, for their logistics and resource assistance over the past few days. Our field offices in Boston, Miami, Washington, D.C., and our LEGAT office in Bridgetown. FBI headquarters components that fed and worked on this case from Criminal Investigative Division, our CERG team, Crisis uh, Incident Response Group, and our International Operations Division. And of course, the special agents from, and forensic accountants from our Securities Fraud Squad, as well as the Money Laundering Squad. The Justice Department Office of International Affairs has been uh, an important partner in this. And of course, as Damien noted before, his team in Securities and Commodities Fraud, Money Laundering, and Transnational Criminal Enterprise Unit has been a true partner in this case. I also want to thank our international law enforcement partners. These kind of cases do not ha happen without that kind of coordination, and I specifically want to note the assistance provided by the Royal Bahamas Police Force. And I want to be clear, this case is about fraud. Fraud is fraud. It does not matter the complexity of the investment scheme, it does not matter the amount of money involved. If you mislead and deceive to take what does not belong to you, we will hold you accountable. And I'd like to thank everyone who's been working on this case for helping us adhere to that principle today. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Grabeer Graywell, the director of the SEC's Division of Enforcement. Today, in a parallel civil complaint, the SEC filed charges against Sam Bankman Freed, alleging that he orchestrated a years long scheme to defraud equity investors in FTX Trading Limited, a company that he co founded and led as CEO until its collapse last month. As alleged in our complaint, starting in 2019 and continuing through November 2022, Bankman Freed raised more than $1.8 billion from equity investors on the basis of lies. You see, FTX operated behind a veneer of legitimacy that Bankman Freed created by, among other things, repeatedly touting to investors FTX's top-notch automated risk controls that he claimed protect, protected customer assets, and by repeatedly claiming that those assets were at all times safe, segregated, and secure. But as we allege in our complaint, that veneer wasn't just thin, it was also fraudulent, because in reality, from FTX's inception in 2019, Bankman Freed began secretly and improperly diverting FTX customer funds to his crypto hedge fund, Alameda Research. And as alleged in our complaint, he then misused those funds to
to make undisclosed venture investments, lavish real estate purchases, and large political donations. Bankman Freed's claims about FTX's sophisticated risk controls and other customer protections were simply bogus. Similarly, his representations to FTX investors and trading customers concerning Alameda were also part of that carefully crafted veneer and were similarly false and misleading. He frequently claimed that Alameda was just another customer with no special privileges at FTX. But in truth, Bankman Freed directed that Alameda be exempt from the very risk management measures that he touted to FTX investors and to its customers. He also provided Alameda a virtually unlimited line of credit funded by FTX customers. And he also diverted billions of dollars in customer funds from FTX to Alameda. Bankman Freed's entire house of cards started to crumble as crypto asset prices plummeted in May of 2022, and as Alameda's lenders demanded repayment on billions of dollars in loans. But to continue propping up his empire, we allege that Bankman Freed diverted billions more in FTX customer assets to Alameda, even as it was increasingly clear that Alameda and FTX could not make those customers whole. In fact, through the summer of 2022, he, deferred, he diverted hundreds of millions more in FTX customer funds to Alameda, which he then used for additional venture investments and for loans to himself and to other FTX executives. All the while, he continued to make misleading statements to investors about FTX's financial condition and about its risk management. And even in November 2022, faced with billions of dollars in customer withdrawal requests that FTX could not fulfill, Bankman Freed misled investors from whom he sought still more money to plug the multi-billion dollar holes that he had created. His brazen multi-year scheme finally came to an end when FTX, Alameda, and their tangled web of affiliates filed for bankruptcy on November 11th, 2022. That collapse has had far-reaching consequences for FTX customers, for its investors, and for its counterparties. And our investigation into those consequences, into those individuals and entities involved, remains ongoing. But one immediate takeaway from today's announcement should be that non-compliant trading platforms pose dramatic risks to both their investors and to their customers. Among other things, they don't provide them with the same robust level of disclosures and protections against fraud and conflicts of interest. That's what traditional U.S. registered securities exchanges provide. So it's imperative that non-compliant platforms come into compliance. But as Chair Gensler has made clear, the runway is getting shorter for them to come in and to register with us. And for those who do not, the Enforcement Division stands ready to take action. I'd like to recognize the incredible team from our Crypto Assets and Cyber Unit and from across our division responsible for today's action. Devlin Sue, Ivan Snyder, David Brown, Brian Huckrow, Pasha Salimi investigated this matter under the supervision of Amy Hartman, Michael Brennan, Jorge Tenrero, and David Hirsch. Amy Burkhart and David Daadio will, will lead the litigation against Bankman Freed under the supervision of Ladan Stewart and Olivia Che. Finally, I want to commend our partners here at the Southern District of New York under the leadership of U.S. Attorney Damian Williams and our partners at the FBI and the CFTC. This is a yet another strong example of the collaboration that you see before you this afternoon. With that, I'll turn it back to U.S. Attorney Williams. Thank you. I'd like to welcome up Gretchen Lowe from the CFTC. Good afternoon. I'm Acting Director Gretchen Lowe, of, Acting Director of the Division of Enforcement at the CFTC, Gretchen Lowe. Thank you so much for the opportunity to speak, speak today. Today, the CFTC filed a complaint against Sam Bankman Freed and his companies, FTX and Alameda, charging a fraudulent scheme that dates back to the launch of FTX.com exchange in May 2019. The CFTC's complaint specifically charges defendants with fraud by misappropriation of customer funds, as well as false statements to the public, customers, investors, and Congress about the handling and security of those funds. As alleged, there are over $8 billion in customer losses that we have um, ascertained as of today. 
The rippling consequences of defendant's fraud are vast and have done significant damage to the integrity of the evolving digital asset market. The CFTC charges that at Bankman Freed's direction, FTX customers, customer deposits intended to be used to trade digital asset commodity futures swaps and other pro products were not appropriately segregated by F FTX. Instead, customer funds were held in Alameda accounts where they were commingled and misappropriated for a variety of unauthorized purposes, such as use in high-risk investments in other digital asset enterprises, political contributions, and to purchase lu luxury real estate. As charged, the fraudulent use of customer funds by Bankman Freed and his companies were inconsistent with the touted FTX terms of service and contrary to numerous statements made by public statements made by Bankman Freed. The C C CFTC also charges that defendants created features in the underlying code for FTX that allowed Alameda to have essentially an unlimited line of credit on the exchange. Defendants also provided Alameda with unfair trading advantages, including quicker execution times and an exemption from FTX's auto li liquidation risk management process. This massive and costly fraud was in the connection with commodities interstate commerce and, as alleged, including Bitcoin, Ether, and Tether, which are the most widely traded digital assets in the world. Bitcoin and Ether also underlie derivatives contracts on CFTC-designated exchanges. Lastly, standing here today with the U U.S. Attorney's Office at the Southern District, FBI, and the SEC represents yet another stellar example of the importance of federal regulators and federal criminal authorities working collaboratively and effectively with each other to achieve justice. The teams work quickly and tirelessly to obtain compelling evidence and to begin to hold those responsible for the FTX collapse accountable, all within a very short time frame. Thank you to all at the SDNY, FBI, and SEC for your cooperation. And thank you to the CFTC team, Nina Rubinsky, Carlin Metzger, Brian Sue, Ben Jackman, Yusuf Chapar, supervised by Deputy Director Robert Howell and Chief Trial Elizabeth Pendleton, and many, many others um, at the Commission who supported the work. I am proud of your, your hard work, your dedication to the uh, mission of the Commission and for always acting in the public interest. Thank you. All right, happy to take some questions. Well, you can commit fraud in shorts and t-shirts in the sun. I mean, that's possible, too. Um, so I think that, that addresses the, the, the last question. In terms of whether we're going to bring charges against anyone else, um, look, I can only say it this clearly, but we are not done. And extradition? Extradition is ongoing um, in, in the Bahamas. I don't have anything to add on that. Next question. Okay, so on the on the, the the timing of the arrest, as I mentioned before, I authorized charges last week Wednesday, and he was indicted as a defendant in this district as of last week Friday, and we had a warrant for his arrest. And so the timing um, was dictated by law enforcement as opposed to any other considerations, um, including the timing of his testimony in Congress. He was wanted uh, for arrest, and, and we and we acted on that. Um, in terms of the speed of the, of the investigation, you're right, this is very, very fast, but I've also underscored that we're not done. Um, but we have a track record here, I think. You've seen us, you know, this group in particular, at this podium multiple times since I've been U.S. Attorney announcing charges um, in this space with, with a lot of speed. Um, I think that's a result of the collaboration and the hard work um, and the determination to make sure that we are acting as soon as possible and no sooner. Next question. 
Look, I think today's announcement is about one person um, and, and, and his conduct. Um, it is fair to say that um, this office and our partners um, who are standing with us today are very, very active in this space. I can't say anything more than that. Next question. So if you're asking about who is cooperating, who is not cooperating with our investigation, I'm not at liberty uh, to say who has come in. I will reiterate the call that I made before, that if you have not reached out to us to talk to us, I would encourage you strongly to do so and do so quickly. Next question. Look, I'll take the last question first. I mean, I don't think uh, it's fair for me to speculate as to what could have been done differently by whom and when um, to prevent something like this from happening. I mean, we've alleged willful misconduct and fraud. Um, and so ultimately, from where I sit, given my role, I view uh, the fault as being with the people who we have um, uh, alleged, either in um, you know, the indictment or uh, you know, references CCs, uh, co-conspirators, as being the people who are responsible for, for, for this happening. Um, can you repeat the first question again? I'm not going to expand beyond what I said previously. Next question. Sure. On the campaign finance side, do you think any of the elected officials or candidates were aware that these were improper contributions? As we said just now in the House, I think it was the third hearing, that pending legislation may have been impacted by this flow of funds. Do you have any comments on that? And on possibly seeking remand, which is when the way comes. Do you intend to say any of the questions? Okay, so that's a lot of questions. <laughs> um, look, I'm not going to get ahead of ourselves in terms of um, what we may or may not seek when he is here. Um, he's currently in the Bahamas, and I'm not going to interfere with that, that process by making a comment at this point in time. Um, in terms of the contributions that we've discussed today and in the indictment, um, uh, you know, I'm not going to be able to expand upon who knew what. Um, we have alleged what we have alleged. Um, and if we have more to add at any point, we will, we will do so then. It's so hard to compare these things, but I, I think it's fair to say that by any anyone's lights, this is one of the biggest financial frauds in American history. Any other questions? Okay, thank you everybody. Thank you.